Hi guys, it's Janet. Welcome back to my crazy little life. Part two, because I did one earlier and this is, um, we're just going to keep going with some stories. And then I do have a few items I bought at Dollar Tree and a store we have by us called Job Lot that is just the greatest store to go into for the weirdest things. So we'll get to that in a minute, but I'm trying to think of where I left off. I had one more story to tell you. So we have, um, we did our truck or treat. I had posted a picture of my costume. It was chaos, but controlled chaos. We had a great time. We did it. Originally, we were supposed to do it on the 21st. It was pouring rain and cold. And so we did it on the 28th. But everything worked out for the best. So the 28th, it was the most beautiful, sunny, gorgeous day. The wind kicked up towards the end of the day and man, oh man, was it crazy. Um, I'm still picking leaves out of my car because I have like, you know, I have a SUV, so I had the back open and all the leaves were just blowing into my car. I did my Corolla DeVille. My car was not the way I wanted it to be, but I didn't have the time. I told my friend, you know, the one that runs it with me, I told her that I didn't have time to do the car, to do it properly. So I just did a quick balloon arch, hung a tarp up, had my dogs. That was it. I don't have a picture of my car. I never got a picture of my car. I had a great time this year because when I was parking people, I was able to stop and see them, put a name to a face because um, I had a lot of the same people here this year that we had last year. We had 40 cars again. We had the police, the fire, a couple tow truck companies, a um, couple landscaping companies. The kids just love seeing all that equipment and such. So it was a super good time. Um, we had just over 400 kids this year. And that's a significant growth over last year. And it, it's just nice because the kids go through, you know, they pay $3 and we use that money. Our 4-H council uses that money for camperships, scholarships, um, when we have graduating seniors. Uh, we also give, we pay half of the kids' entry fees to be in 4-H for the year because there's a, a fee to do the to do 4-H for the year on top of any club dues you might have. So there's a fee we have to pay to the state. So we try to help with that because, you know, if you've, you're a parent and you've got four kids, five kids, and they're all in 4-H, that money can add up quick. So that's why we do these events, um, because we like to help out. And then it grows 4-H. We get more kids in, more. It's, it's, it's just 4-H is starting to die a little bit in this area. And um, it's, it's sad. Like, we took a huge hit during COVID when, because we are under the umbrella of the University of Massachusetts. So they were the ones dictating our rules. It didn't matter that you could meet outside at a farm. It didn't matter that you could be outside. Boy Scouts went back to doing events. Um, Pony Club was doing events. The breeds barely ever stopped. So we lost a lot of kids to other other clubs and other organizations because we were on lockdown for two years. So we're trying to rebuild it. Belchertown had the most clubs in, I believe in the state. We had at one time, I think like 11 or 12 clubs. And now we might have three, like it's, it's sad, but we're trying to build it back up. We're trying to get back up. Don't quote me on my numbers. They might be off. I know we had a lot and now we have a little, and so we're trying to build it back up. We're trying to get it back where it should be. So these events bring awareness and, you know, people ask us like, what do they have to do to be in 4-H? What is 4-H about? Because people think 4-H, oh, it's animals. It's not animals. It's, it's not just animals. It's robotics. It's babysitting. It's um, computers. It's small engines. It's rockets. It's animals. It's knitting. It's crafts. It's, it, any project area can be a 4-H project. So you just find the club um, that fits your needs and you join that club. And sometimes if there's not a club in your area, but there's enough interest in the area, we will help you start up a club. We are right now, um, it's a small group of us, we're looking to start a homesteading club because kids need to know things like growing your own plants and how to do canning and how to do pressure canning and what items get canned and what items get water bath, what items get pressured. 
what items don't, how you can, you know, can things like you can preserve your rice, excuse me, by using the lid and putting it in an oven. So there's a lot of things we're trying to teach people. Um, but we haven't finalized all the details for that yet. Um, we certainly have enough kids to fill the club, but for us, our busy season, like the 4-H year starts October 1st. Our town fair is the third week into September. And so we start with that at the beginning of September that we have a county fair and the same group of people are on the county committee that are on the town committee for the most part. There's a lot of overlap. So we do that. I have vacation. I come home. It's that county fair. Then we have like two weeks and it's the town fair. And then we have like two or three weeks and it's trunk or treat. And then we'll probably have three weeks and then I'll have to start making bows, get the wreaths because we do a huge wreath sale with the Boy Scouts Thanksgiving weekend. So it gets super busy. Things start to get crazy, but I like it because it's such fun things with such fun people and and I just really enjoy it. So um, it, it's life gets crazy. But I had started to say in the, the end of the last video that things were a little hard on me. Uh, my friend, I, I'm, I'm sure I told you the reason I went to Florida was for my friend's celebration of life. She passed away the day after I got on vacation. Um, we knew it was coming. She was really, really sick. Cancer just destroyed her beautiful, beautiful body. And so her celebration of life hit me really really hard, really hard, um, for a million reasons. And, um, if I think if I start talking too much about them, I'll just get all wilty again, but it was really hard for me that I finally made it down there to, to see her house and to see her and everything. And, and it was too late. That hit me hard. And then I got down there and I was talking to my friends and, and new friends and old friends and, and they were like, you know, she wouldn't want you to be sad. She wouldn't want you. She wouldn't want this. And no, she wouldn't. She absolutely wouldn't. She was the most fun, spontaneous, hilarious woman ever. And so being at her celebration of life and watching her husband, who is one of the strongest men who just, he is fierce in his love and he defends his family to the end, he would go to the mats for you if that's what you needed. Um, but he's a big burly man. And to see him look so sad at the end of that night, because even though she had passed and we had a little bit of time to process, that was the day we said goodbye. And and it was hard, it was really, really hard. And to see him sitting there in, in the, the the celebration of life ended at like, I don't know, 6, 6.30, something like that. And this was midnight. We were still sitting there. Um, he just looked really, really sad. And he was, it, it was hard. It, it just, it hit me super, super hard. And I was surprised at how hard it hit me. And I came home and I just, I had the hard, I couldn't do anything. I couldn't bring myself to do anything. So... Then I got thrown into, you know, the fair and, and trunk or treat and everything. So it, it, it's it been a super, super busy time for me since the last week of August. And here we are, all of a sudden it's the beginning of November. And how did that happen so fast? I have no idea because it's going to be Thanksgiving in a couple of weeks. And... So I kind of snapped out of it the last few days and I've been finally getting some things accomplished and um, starting to get the motivation to want to do some things again that I haven't done. And so that feels good. It feels good to be able to do that. And um, this friend that I said that I had met that lives 2,000 miles away, he's hilarious, absolutely hilarious. And we laugh and we joke and we talk and, and it's nice. It's just fun. And I think that's really helped me to come out of my funk. So, um, I'm, I'm back. I think I'm, I'm back and I'm ready to do some things again. Um, it'll just be a few weeks until, 
I start making bows for wreaths and then we have the wreath sale and and then you know it's it's time to decorate and have Christmas and and I am doing Christmas here but um I don't know if it'll end up being here at my daughter's house sometimes she likes to do things so but the plan is to have it here so hopefully I'll have my house all done I I have this project in mind and you heard me talk if you've been following the channel at all how I come up with a project and I just go for it um today I planed the door for my bathroom my upstairs bathroom because I had retiled the floor and because it's just me and the baby it's not a big deal if we close the door so I hadn't rushed to plane the door but I did that today got the door hung back up so I officially have a bathroom door again put my threshold down everything's good so my bathroom is the way I want it except for um I have mirrors all over my house because I love old mirrors so I was thinking I remembered there was a mirror that someone had put behind the couch because there was no place else to store it apparently I don't know I don't even remember where this mirror came from but it's here and so I was like oh there's that mirror behind the couch there's there's a big blank wall in the bathroom and I haven't figured out what I want to do with it so this really cool mirror I'll just show you it's it's an old mirror but it's got this top on it show you the I don't want to but see this this top other than that it's just got this nice square frame and it looks like the top will be easy enough to take off because it's kind of a derpy thing so I'll just have the nice square mirror and I'm going to paint it black because my bathroom is all black and white and this will go on the wall so then like when you're using you know the bathroom mirror to get ready or whatever you can see the back of your hair how many times you go to, you want to see the back of your hair and you got to like get out a hand mirror and whatnot. So this will just make it easier. So I'm super excited about that. I was going to do that today, but I didn't. So I'll probably work on that after we're done here. So, um, I'm, I'm back. I feel good. I'm ready to do projects again. And then my TV that's right over there. I have built this dog crate and the way I built it was I saw it on Pinterest and I was like, I am not paying $600 for a dog crate. I can build that. And my dog's kind of tall, a little bit. He's not huge, he's a little tall. So like your average size dog, only maybe two inches taller. So I wanted to be able to make it kind of fit him. <clears throat> so I knew what the picture looked like. So I brought, bought all the wood and I had my little, what I call my saw. It's, it's, I don't know, it's a circular saw, whatever. I don't know what the term for it is. It's an arm saw, radial arm saw. I'm not sure, miter saw. I, it's. It does a whole bunch of things. So me and my saw sat on the floor here in the living room. And I would slide over to that well. And I'd be like, all right, I want the crate to go from here to here. And I'd measure that. And I would cut that piece. And I'd lay it down. And I'd go, I want the crate to go from here to here. And I'd measure that. So I built it specifically to go in that corner of my living room. And it came out fantastic for someone who is not a carpenter. Someone who is a carpenter would look at that and be like, it's okay. It's nice. I get a lot of compliments on it. But I sort of, um, the way I built it, I like, it's so, it, it's in the corner, but the front is like a, it's three-sided. So I built it, and then I took his big, ugly metal dog crate apart, and I screwed it in. So it's got the wire sides. I originally wanted to do it with an old crib, but I couldn't find the crib that I saw on Pinterest. So that's my dog crate TV stand. But what I really want to do is take my TV that I don't watch very often and mount it from the ceiling. So it's up there. And then I want to build a mantle, but I, not a, an across mantle, like a corner mantle kind of, you know, whatever this way like an L in the corner I want to build a mantle then the top of the dog crate will be cleared off and I could put like my holiday decorations or whatever and then I could put something on top of the dog crate but it would just give me more of an it, it my house is not a home yet it's it's my house I love it I just haven't I have one wall that has pictures on it's the other side of this wall here 
but I haven't really hung a lot. My mirrors got put up right away because I wasn't going to risk any of my mirrors getting broken. So I've mirror my mirrors are up. That's it. I don't have any pictures anywhere and I need to decorate my house. So when the new windows got put in, I updated the curtains and everything. The curtains were all brand new when I moved in, but I switched some rooms around. So, uh, you know, that it, they, it, when you walk in the house, it doesn't look like no one lives here. It just looks like it's not decorated. So I want, I want to put the TV in the corner, put a mantle. And my friend Joe messaged me yesterday. Joe's my project guy. Whenever I want to do something, him, he and I met on a dating app, I don't know, 15 years ago. And it just didn't work out. But uh, we've been really good friends ever since. So if I need a truck, I need a piece of equipment, whatever, I just call him. He's there. He's always there for me. And he's wonderful. And I love him for that. So <clears throat> he messaged me yesterday. I'm like, hey, did you know I was thinking about you? And he's like, what do you mean? I'm like, I have a project. He's like, I love projects. So I think he's going to come over in a couple of weeks and we're going to attempt that. And um, I was telling you about the dog crate I built. I built it in this room. <clears throat> Excuse me. I built it in this room. And it has to live in this room forever. Or I have to deconstruct it. Because it um, doesn't fit out any of the doors. I don't even think. I can't even turn it sideways to get it out of the doors. So I would have to take it apart to get it out of the house. So, which is not a big deal in the event that I ever sell the house. Either A, I leave the dog crate behind, or B, I take it apart and take it with me. It's not the end of the world. I could do it. So, but I didn't stain it because I built it in my living room in the winter. Well, then when I decided that I was going to take it outside and stain it, that's when I realized that I can't. And here it is winter again. So, one day soon, probably before Christmas, I'm going to stain it and my house is just going to stink. I'll open the windows, whatever. I'll put fans on. The house is just going to smell for a day or two, but it'll be fine. Put some candles on. It'll be fine. Everything's fine. But if I'm going to stain that, I'm going to stain the two mantle pieces that I'm going to put up too. So I want to get all that done. My house is built out of, my walls are all lath and plaster. You can hang anything from anywhere in this house. And um, I wouldn't really be worried about I mean, obviously, I will do it right with the anchors and whatnot. But this house, it just, it's like the walls go, oh, let me hold that for you. It's great. I love it. So I'm going to mount the TV, put the mantle, get that corner decorated. And then by the time I get all that done, it'll be time to decorate for Christmas. Because I am not allowed to put one single Christmas thing out. Although it doesn't matter. I'm the only one who lives here now, so I can do what I want. But my kids are like, no, you don't decorate until the day after Thanksgiving. So we usually go the way we do things here. We do Thanksgiving dinner. Thanksgiving dinner is all over. We look at the flyers and then we make our plan for Black Friday shopping and we set our alarms and we get up and we go Black Friday shopping in the morning. I love that. I don't even care if I get the things I'm going to get, but I love it. Absolutely love it. And I enjoy every minute of the event because my girls go with me or their friends or whoever. It's fun. It's just a good time. And it's not so much about the shopping. It's about the event, the people we're with. And it's a lot of fun and I love it. So after we're done Black Friday shopping, we come back home. Sometimes we take a nap, sometimes we don't. And then if we're going to get a live tree, which we didn't last year, because um, the girls said they didn't want to, if we get a live tree, we go and get it that day and then we get it put up and whatnot. Um, and I bought a little tree because last year nobody was going to be here. That was when I had my surgery. Um, so I was like, you know what? I'm not doing anything. I'm not decorating at all. And as soon as Christmas, like I I'm sitting here wrapping presents after the first surgery. Because by Black Friday, um, my first surgery last year was October 26th. The second one was December 21st. So... By Black Friday, I felt pretty much good enough to shop. And I think we might've used a wheelchair a little bit, um, but I was I was walking really good by, by Thanksgiving. Um, so I'm sitting here in my home and I'm wrapping Christmas presents and I'm watching, that's, the Christmas is probably the only time that TV gets used because I just don't ever watch it. So I'm wrapping Christmas presents and I'm like, I. 
I can't, I can't do this. There is no Christmas at all. And I wasn't planning on getting a Christmas tree because I was going to spend Christmas like a couple of weeks at Christmas at my daughter's house just because it was easier for us to go there than for her to have to come back and forth. I just brought my dog, me, the baby, and the dog went there and we all stayed there for a couple of weeks and it was, it was just easier. So I bought this little Christmas tree, like it's probably, I don't know, three, three and a half feet tall. And I put it in the corner and it just looked sad and pathetic and, but at least I had a little tree. So this year, my plan is to put the big tree in this window and my little tree on my table on my porch. And that way there I can have a little tree out there and lit up. And I want to get some beachy themed ornaments to go with my porch and it'll be out there. And then I will do my regular Christmas tree inside because we're going to do Christmas here. So I'll have things together by then. That's why I want to get that little corner project going. So now that y'all know everything about my life, um, Peek Peek's thinking about coming back, so she might make an appearance. I'm gonna show you the few things I got at Dollar Tree. Come here, baby. She can see where she normally jumps up. Hi, come here, come here. Big yellow's in the way, so she's not sure she wants to walk over. So she may come over, I have an itchy eye, hold on. She may come over, she may not. You may see her walk up on the couch behind me. So I'm going to show you. So we have a store by us called Job Lot, Ocean State Job Lot. I don't know if they, I, I don't know if it's nationwide, if it's New England, if it's regional, Northeast, whatever, but it's called Ocean State Job Lot. It's a cool store. You buy all kinds of really weird things there and, and some things are weird and some things are just good. And so I wanted to get a few things. Um, what I really went there for was what's in this bag. I really went there for honey. Now, I usually buy local honey. Um, I buy it from my friend up the street. But for this project, I could not afford to buy local honey because um, it's just, it's not too expensive. But for me, I just didn't have the cash to lay out for the amount of honey I needed. So this jar of honey, I want to say it was $6.99 and it's a good size jar. So what I got this for... Um, my daughter had made this thing. You just take garlic. So like I will probably just take a little bit of honey out of this jar and do it in this jar. I don't know if I'll transfer it to another jar. But you put, you fill the garlic, like fresh garlic. You take the skins off and everything and you put all the, um, I can't even think of the word for garlic pieces right now why do what is wrong with me like clo cloves cloves of garlic wow that one wasn't coming to me so anyway you fill the the jar three quarters with fresh garlic and then you pour the honey over it and you kind of let it um you, you know you let it you kind of shake it a little to get it all so it's all surrounding it and you fill it to about three quarters of the jar then you put the lid on it flip it over put it in a dark space Every day flip it, but you have to crack the lid and let the gases out because as the garlic breaks down, it will produce gas. You just gotta you just gotta burp it every day. No big deal. So that's why I got this. Um, I was at my daughter's the other day, I don't know, three or four days ago. The baby coughed in my mouth, and if you know anything about those little fomites that go to daycare. Fomite, just being it, anything that carries germs. It's not a not a derogatory term in any way. Um, the little fomites like to bring their germs home, and the kids are like immune. They're immune to their own little germs, completely immune. As adults, we are not immune to all their little germs that they share. And I just happened, she was on my lap, and she was looking at me, and she coughed. And she coughed, of course, right as my mouth was open. So it was like, <clears throat> direct hit. Like, I was, you know, direct hit, Scotty, we're done. Um, so within a day or two, of course, I was feeling like junk. And thankful that I have a job where I don't have to go in if I don't feel good. So absolutely feeling like junk, like just yucky. The only time I left the house was to go bring her to daycare or take her home from daycare. But that's not unusual. It's kind of sometimes the only thing I do anyway, but... 
So I got over that. That lasted about a week. I was fine. I was over that. And, you know, I was never down and out. I was just sort of, ugh. so fine, feeling good. About ready. I go back into the office for one day. So I was donating blood and we have a deadline for we have to get our flu shot. And I had gotten the, the red email saying, you know, you haven't had your flu shot yet. And I knew I hadn't had it because I was planning on getting it the day I donated blood. So I went and I got my flu shot. And you cannot, I will say it louder for the people in the back, you cannot get the flu from the flu shot. It is an inactive virus. It's a dead virus. You are not getting a live virus injection. So you cannot get the flu shot. You cannot get the flu from the flu shot. What can happen though is when the flu shot goes in and they start kicking up the antibodies and whatnot, if you've got something germinating in your immune system, in your body, it can sort of kick that into overdrive. And that's what it did. And I just sort of got round two, but it, I didn't feel bad. I just had, I was sneezing and my nose was running like crazy. I had wicked laryngitis, hilarious. Um, and one of my friends said to me, he's like, hey, I like that voice better. I said, my voice is deep enough. I'm not going to keep the laryngitis voice, so stop it. So I... I couldn't stop coughing. Like I got to the point where the nose stopped running and whatnot, but I couldn't stop coughing. And when you get to the point where you're so dry that even taking a drink doesn't stop the cough, I happened to be over my daughter's, we were having dinner. I don't remember why. We were, we were having dinner over there. And she's like, take a spoonful of the garlic honey because they say that when the garlic and the honey, like you got, it takes like two weeks, I think, to meld in. Um, but it takes... It takes a couple of weeks and it breaks it down and you're like, oh, you don't really taste the garlic. I like the taste of garlic, but generally I, I didn't think I was going to like this garlic honey thing. So I took a, just a regular teaspoon, like not a measuring teaspoon, just like kind of spoon you use to eat every day. Took a spoonful and I stopped coughing for like three hours. And I was like, I haven't had three hours where I didn't cough in a week. So I was like, there's something to this. Now, I'm feeling better now, but I'm going to get this bad boy going with some garlic tomorrow because I'm going to do that. So I have that garlic honey thing here, so I will be ready for the next round. And like I said, I, I it was like seven, seven or $8.99. It wasn't much for a jar that big. Then I'm sure you've heard me say that I haven't been able to find my monsters at Dollar Tree. Uh, the Monster Java Vanilla Light. Haven't been able to find them. And I really think that the reason I can't find them is because the reason they were at Dollar Tree is because they were a discontinued flavor. And I've looked at several Dollar Trees. They're not there. So I was at Job Lot and there was another one. It was called 300 by the Black Rifle Coffee, Coffee Company. And it was 300, I want to say it was caramel coffee. I drank that the other morning, and man, I got to tell you, it didn't taste great, but I had the focus of a ninja. It was great. So I will 100% be going back to get more of those, but I already drank it, and because I automatically put it in the sink, rinse the can, throw it in the recycling, I didn't think to grab it when I brought everything else in here. So that one, I think, was $1.25, and this one, I believe, was a dollar. So this one is Black Rifle Coffee Company, again, Express Espresso Mocha. 200 milligrams of caffeine. So this will be tomorrow's tomorrow's breakfast. This is 170 calories, two grams of fat, 30 carbs. There's a lot of carbs in it. A lot, a lot of carbs. 23 of them are sugars. Seven grams of protein. So it, it's got some pluses and some minuses. If you're trying to lose weight, not the thing for you. Should I be drinking it? Probably not. But I'm going to give a shot. Just because I noticed when I stopped having my monsters, the mornings were a little more um, sluggish. And I absolutely wasn't, I was hungry. I was, and I don't want to be hungry. I, I can't be eating like that. So also I figured, well, since, you know, and I would show you the receipt for all of these things, but you get the choice to email the receipts. And so now I just do that because if you email the receipt, then... 
It's just less paper that I'm wasting. So then I got this coffee. This was $3.99 uh, because I was like, you know what? If I can't get my coffee in my monster, I'm just going to go back to making coffee. Well, I had been making my coffee at home and it just lately started tasting like crap and I just didn't like it. Um, but the coffee I have is almost gone. And honestly, I told you, dude, I got things in my, my fridge, like condiments in my fridge. There's probably a bottle of ketchup in my fridge that could vote, but... Um, the coffee was from my brother's house. My brother passed away a while ago, a while ago. And I'm, I, I can't remember if this coffee was from his house or not. I, I don't think it was, but I think it was coffee that I had bought for him when he came here. Um, because we pretty much threw all the food at his apartment away so it must have been the one that I bought for him to keep here. So when he was here for holidays and whatnot, I had the coffee. So either way, he's been gone two years. So that coffee is at least two years old. So it really needs to be thrown out. But did I throw it out? No, because I'm cheap and I'm just going to use it. So my good coffee, my good flavored coffee is at work because I have a coffee pot on my desk. But I haven't been going to the office much lately because I just don't. Um, so my good coffee's at the office. So I bought coffee. And it's Countryside Coffee Roasters. It's hazelnut. Let me see right over there. There we go. And it's out of Newington, Connecticut, this coffee roaster. So I am hoping that I like this coffee better. I know I'm going to like it better because that other one sucks. So even if this isn't great, it's still going to be better. It smells good. And that's my biggest thing. If it smells good, it usually tastes good. So then I got some coffee. And $3.99 was what I paid for that. So not terribly expensive. So that was it for the stuff I got at Job Lot. Other than that one coffee drink that I drank already and didn't show you. Um, cool store. Really cool store. And super fun at Christmas time because they do these things called crazy deals. And a lot of times, and I don't know how they do this, but they do. Like... You'll buy an item that's like $40 and they give you a $39.99 crazy deal gift card. So it costs you a penny. Um, and those are only good if you're going to go in and buy that item anyway. And there's a lot of things that I go in that I were I was going to buy anyway. So if I get the crazy deal gift card, it's really like getting it for half price because now I'm getting to spend that same money twice. So the uh, some of the things that they put on sale, like... For the holidays, when they do Black Friday, they always do their large pack of hand warmers and foot warmers. You know, those little packets that you shake up and you put in your mittens or your boots or whatever. Um, if you have livestock, you probably know what I'm talking about. Uh, they're just little packets. You just sort of shake them and they heat up and they say they're good for six hours, but they generally don't make a full six hours. But those things are nice. Um, and they usually do the big box of those. And whatever the cost of it is, you get that same cost in a, in a gift card. And you don't get the gift card. You get the gift card right then, but you can't spend it till the next day, which is fine because I go there a lot. I spend enough there. Uh, so it's it's cool. The deals they have are cool. So if you don't, if you have one around you, you should check it out. They're cool stores. And you get some weird, different, different things that are just nifty. Like you can get tools. You can get to, it's like a tiny little department store. It's almost like the old Zares or Caldors, little, just little. There's a little bit of food in it. There's a little bit of like dry goods food, some canned stuff and whatnot. No refrigerated food, um, but all non-perishable stuff. You can buy blankets, you can buy tarps, you can buy toys, you can buy health and beauty products. You know, you can get, you can get gum, you can get candy, you can get mittens, you can get shoes. There's just all kinds of stuff in there. Bathing suits, um, like kayaks, you, you can, it, it's, it's just a cool store. So if you have them around, go check them out. I love to go there. And luckily for me, there's one a couple miles away. So that same day that I went to Jabla, I went to Dollar Tree because I needed to get something. I don't remember what, probably remember when I get in this bag, but I think it was just that I was going to check again for my drinks. So everything I got in here. I don't think I got the one there was, I don't think I got anything in the plus section. So I bought, they also do a thing where at, um, at Dollar Tree every once in a while, they'll do, uh, you know, you can buy like to send toys to the, 
veterans or children or children of veterans. I'm not sure, whatever. But they had a thing and they were, they, at the register, you know, you could buy, do you want to buy a toy for, it was, like I said, it was either veterans or it must be veterans, kids or kids of parents who are deployed or something. And I was like, yeah, whatever, I'll buy one. And then I said, you know, can I buy one for me as well? Because I belong to a group called Beer Bros of Mass. It's on Facebook. It's just a fun, fun group. Bunch of great people. It, it's um, this one guy formed it in 2020 because that was when, you know, I don't know if you remember all the women were doing the whining um, where you would make up a wine basket and bring it to someone. And um, so this guy was like, dude, not everybody wants wine. Um, we want some beer. So he formed Beer Bros of Mass, him and his wife. There have been so many changes in the last three and a half years since Beer Bros was made. But I've met some wonderful friends through there. Um, I've had a good time with a lot of the people that I've met. Tried some new beers, checked out some new places. It's just been a good group. Uh, so there's been some ups and downs, but you know, now that things are pretty much back to normal, all of that sense of giving and whatnot has kind of gone away. And that's fine because normal life happens and that's the way it is. But Beer Bros tends to do events. And when they do an event, they do it for a charity. So there's a, a, a group in Western Mass. And I, I don't know if it, I never paid attention to it before. Or before I was a foster parent, I maybe I just didn't hear it. I don't know. I'd never heard of it before really till the last couple of years when I was a foster parent. But I wouldn't ever submit my foster daughter's name for anything because this child is so loved and so spoiled. She doesn't even know that we're not her family. Um, and yes, she's only three, but I'm not going to throw her hat into the ring for a situation where she doesn't need it. We give her more than she needs. And there are kids that have literally nothing. There are kids that are, that they're, the foster system is so, so broken and so anything I can do to help, I'm gonna. So Beer Bros got together with this organization that does a toy drive. So what they want to do is get as many toys as they can from Beer Bros to bring to this foster care program, this foster toy drive that they do. So I, I don't know. I'm pretty sure, judging from the people who are involved in it, I'm pretty sure it's a Western Mass thing, so that's good. It'll stay local. But even though Maya's only three, she loves stuff like this. It's it's This is the, the Jenga game you can get at Dollar Tree. And I don't know, it's, it's, my light's a little shiny because my light in this room is bad. But so it's, they're just, it's, it's a little tiny, like just a tiny, they call it a tumbling tower game. But it's $1.25. And honestly, a lot of crafters buy this because they use these little blocks of wood for all their crafting things. So I got one anyway. I got one that I gave to that. One's going to go to the foster kids and then I'll get some more toys for the foster kids. But those are, those are cool. Now they have all these socks at Dollar Tree and that's not, there might be some in the other bag. Um, I just think they're funny. I hope my kids think they're as funny as I do because I stand there in the in the aisle and I laugh. I've shown you some of the ones I've gotten before, but they had tacos. I'm not sure. This could go to any of them because everybody loves tacos. But so I got tacos this time. And then I got the baby some socks just because, oh, I just realized... I realized I bought an infant size one to seven and a big kid size one to seven. So, oops. So maybe these will go into the foster kid thing. I don't know. But these are ones I got for her. They're just cute little socks. Um, I mean, these are probably a little big for her, but these are definitely too big for her. That's okay. She'll grow into them. So they're socks. Got those for $1.25. Now, I don't know if I told you when I went camping with my daughter the first weekend of October, it was rainy and cold, 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 rainy. And we were up in Vermont and they did their trunk or treat 
And my daughter is like Susie Homemaker. She's always got, you know, before they went camping, every weekend in the summer, she was like, yeah, I got I to gotta make cookies or bring cookies up, brownies, blah, blah, blah. She was always baking something, always. So I, we, we go up there and I'm like, you didn't bake anything? She's like, no. I'm like, seriously, there's no cookies? There's nothing? She's like, nope. I'm like, oh. Okay then, all right. That's not fun, but okay, whatever. So she's like, well, I have Rice Krispies and I have marshmallows and I have butter, so I can make Rice Krispie treats. I'm like, excellent, good choice, because I was just in the mood. And Rice Krispie treats are one of those things that you either love them or you hate them. Well, I just realized that I've got a lot of extra kick cereal in my pantry, and I don't eat a lot of cereal, but I'm thinking, if I can make Rice Krispie squares, why can't I make Kick squares? So I bought some marshmallows at Dollar Tree because I'm, <coughs> excuse me, whew, I'm going to make some Kick squares. Uh, so I'll let you know how those come out. But I'm going to just do the same thing you do with the Rice Krispies. The cereal, butter, marshmallow. It'll be great. And then I was deemed to make desserts for Thanksgiving. Now, when I make desserts for a holiday, any holiday, and I'm usually the one that makes desserts because I like to make, I, I like to doll it up. I really do. So I like to make a tray that has a bunch of little things so you can take more than one Everybody can try a little bit of everything and it's it's just easy because it's one big tray and everything's there. So I had said to my daughter, I'm going to do dessert. She's like, well, you better have pie. I'm like, well, Auntie Lisa usually buys pies. She's like, well, there better be pie. There better be chocolate pie. There better be pumpkin pie. And there better be, I don't know if she said apple. Must have been apple, pumpkin, and chocolate. And I'm like, yep. And when we make that many pies, there's really only, it's going to be my sister, other sister, husband, maybe her son and his fiance, and then five of us. So 10 people, maybe, maybe, maybe 11. And you want five pies? Like everybody gets their own pie? Like that's crazy. So I was like, well, I saw this thing on Pinterest where you can make like, you take a pie crust and you cut circles and then you sort of make them into almost like a teardrop sort of thing. And you fill, you, you, so you put a spoonful of the filling in and they pinch the ends of it. So it makes almost like a boat, like a little boat. And you put these all in a tray and you cook them. So they're it's kind of like the monkey bread, but it's monkey pie. And so you can break off all the little pieces of pie. My daughter wasn't hearing about that. Nope. Okay. So before I got vetoed on that, um, while I was at Dollar Tree, I got the Mother's Made Cherry Pie Filling. And then I got, I think I got two cherries and an apple. Yeah, two cherries and an apple. Apple pie filling. So I don't know if I'll be allowed to do the little pies like I want to, or if I'm going to have to do full-size pies but either way it doesn't matter whatever whatever people are gonna eat I I really like fudgy fudgy brownies with that like thick ganache type frosting on it and vanilla ice cream that's what I love or cannolis um so if I had done my my tray like I wanted to I could have had the little pies I could have had some other things but whatever I I'm I'm undecided what I'm gonna do but either way, I'll overdo it because that's what I do. Then I got these little paper plates, little tiny ones. There's 50 of them. And they're just the cheap, cheap paper plates. But like when I make a breakfast sandwich in the morning or when I do avocado toast, I don't need to use a big paper plate because I don't. It's just easy to use that. A lot of times I'll just make my sandwich, put it on a paper towel, but I'd rather use those than a paper towel. So... I got those and then just regular, regular size. Um, these are the 8.62 inch and there's 15 of them 
15 of them for $1.25. And I'm pretty sure when you cost them out, like the ones you buy at Walmart or even Aldi's are not cheaper than this. So I've been getting these. Um, plus with just me, you know, a, a lot of times Maya eats off my plates. So I, I got those just because I will use them. Put this stuff back in the bag. Big yellow's giving me eyes because I'm moving stuff around on the couch. And then in here I have, so I've gotten this a bunch of times, the Bang Root Beer. Classic old standby if I can't find my coffee. And this one's fine. And I like the taste of root beer, so this is fine. And I don't know if you watched the video where I got the, um, a and w root beer flavor for the water so like today i had that for this morning and i just made the a and w water um for the afternoon like because then i didn't have to rinse out my ice and my cup and everything now on my porch i told you how i use solar lights on all, all of them all over my porch i have the little glass balls uh if you've watched my previous videos you saw the glass balls that i have that light up and I have those hanging out on my porch. Well, I saw these. Now they had had a similar glass ball like this for the summer, but I missed them. So as soon as I saw these, I grabbed them. So these are, oops, hold on, dropped it. That's what I do. <laughs> um, they're solar lights. So you can see the solar on the top and then now these have been sitting on my, let's see if I put it up to the ring real quick. Let it get a little bit of charge. Um, no. Oh, you know what? I probably have to pull the thing out because these have been sitting on my porch for a couple days. There's an on switch. There we go. So if I cover this, see how it lights up? Well, you can't really see how it lights up. Okay, so that's off. And then on, you can't really see it because of the light there, but they light up real cute. These are solar lights. It's a pretty strong light when you look at it. And again, it's hard to compete with my ring light behind it, but there is an on off switch inside here. And so what I'll do with these is I will hang them. Now the balls that I had hanging on the porch, they were a little too close to the top of the porch so I'm just going to get some S hooks to drop them down like six inches and then they'll charge because all the other solar lights on my porch are bright every night. Um, so I'm going to get some S hooks to hang these and there's blue. I got two of each color, blue, red, yellow, and then green. So I got two of each color. I will have them hanging out on my porch and I will, I'll show you when I have them all done. Oh, I put the green, I'm like, I bought three greens, but I put the green one back in the bag. So those will all go out on my porch and I'm super excited about that. And I actually thought about hanging them out there now, but then I could just hear my daughter. Why do you have Christmas lights up already? Um, and I don't know, we'll see if I put them up. Um, I do want to find the S hooks and I looked on Amazon and you can order them on Amazon, but I'm going to see a Dollar Tree must have something like it. Um, I just want something to drop it down a little lower so it can get more solar, like more, more sun. Cause my whole porch, the entire thing is glassed in with windows. You know, those old louver windows like you had at your grandmother's house. So, my porch is super, super sunny and super warm on the days that it's nice and warm or on the days that it's nice and sunny, but we're about to enter gray season. Um, you know, there, there's that meme going around Facebook that um, don't forget to turn your clocks back from happiness to hope or happiness to despair, something like that. It's, it's, it's kind of funny and accurate. And I did share it because, you know, it's true. It's about to be like, you know, today was really nice and sunny and bright. I, I don't know what the rest of the week is supposed to be. I haven't really looked at the forecast. And 
I'm just not ready. I'm not ready for the sun to go away. I'm not ready to wake up. Like the other morning I got up and I was in the shower because, you know, it's getting darker, staying darker later in the morning, getting darker earlier at night. I was in the shower the other morning and because when I work from home, I don't, I don't even get up till 20 after six. I don't have to start work till 730. So, you know, by the time I shower and do all my morning things, an hour is more than enough time. So sometimes I'll lay around in bed, I'll play Monopoly or Fishland or Farmland. God, those are making me crazy. I'm down to a penny on Fishland and one square on Farmland and I'm at 50% on each of them. And, you know, it, obviously if you order more, you win faster, but I'm not going to order just to order. Uh, there probably is an order going in this week just because there's a couple things I want for Christmas and... I'm going to probably just order, but, you know, I'll, I'll take my time anyway in the morning playing my games or whatever. Um, one of my friends, he attacks me on Monopoly and it cracks me up because he'll call me and he'll be like, how many shields you got? And I'll go, oh, you know, four or whatever. He goes, are you sure? And then it'll flash across the screen that he attacked me. And I'm like, for real, dude. So he will take my city to the ground and then it seems like the day he has a lot of rolls, I don't have any. And then the day that he doesn't have any, I have a lot. So we will annihilate each other and we just go back and forth, back and forth. So it's it's hilarious because we'll be on the phone talking to each other and laughing as we're destroying each other's cities. And But anyway, the, all of that, that whole roundabout thing I was trying to tell you, um, I was in the shower the other morning and I looked out and I was like, you know what? If I were going to work today, if I were leaving the house and going into the office... I would be leaving the house right now and it's dark. It is black out. I, my, my house and my garage are white. It's dark out. And I was like, dude, I am not ready for that. And I can remember the, um, the first year that I was back in Springfield um, that I had my new car because my new car, I'll tell you about the headlights in a minute, but my new car has got the LED lights and I have this thing, I don't know, I swear I'm part moth. I look at lights when I know I shouldn't and the lights in my car are pretty bright. And for whatever reason, I'm stupid enough to look at them when I hit the unlock button on my car. So I'm standing six inches from them and I just blinded. Um, so I can remember when I was over in our last location, you know, don't look at the car, don't look at the car when you're gonna hit your button because it was so dark that, um, you know, you're torn between don't look at the lights and hit the button so you have enough light to get to your car. So it's that time of year again. It's it's gonna it's next week. I, we turn the clocks back. What Saturday night? Um, so Saturday night, Sunday, Sunday. It's gonna be dark. It's gonna it's just gonna be dark. And so when I get up to go to work on Monday, or when I get up to come downstairs on Monday to start working, uh, it's gonna be dark. And at the end of the day, when I go pick up the baby from daycare, it's gonna be dark. And I'm not ready for the only hours of the day that have any sort of light to them being when I'm at work. I'm not ready for that. I do not like the dark. And not that I'm afraid of the dark. I do not like, I don't like the gray season. I don't like, it's just, oh God, I don't know. I'm going to end up getting myself one of those grow lights or whatever. But long story long because, oh wow, this one went almost an hour. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. You know how I can talk. Um, it's, it's that season again. It's, it's time for the darkness and yuck. So I will try to do more of these videos. I might even try putting out some shorts. Um, but I'm not good at shorts because as you can tell, when I talk, I start talking. I don't know how to shut up because it just seems to be what I do. So I did put one up the other day. I did the organizers under my kitchen cabinets and I, I had originally bought four, two for each side, but I couldn't do all four of them because my garbage disposal is there. So I'll probably use the other two in my pantry, but they're wonderful, the little organizers I bought. <clears throat> so I've been using all the things. Like I probably should do a short video uh, just showing you the things that I bought for my kitchen that I've put to use. So I probably will do that um, later, but I did two videos today, so I'm going to get off of here now. 
Uh, I'd like to ask y'all like, share, subscribe, tell your friends. Um, there's probably going to be more, more stories or more projects than there are uh, shopping hauls because I mean, yeah, I'll be Christmas shopping and whatnot. And that's always fun, but I'm not, I, I just, I'm probably not going to, there's not going to be a lot, lot more Timu because I'm just, I've pretty much gotten what I needed. It was a lot of fun while it lasted and I will win those games though. I will play them till I win. I don't care what I have to do, but I'm going to win. And I'll show you that when I get it because I picked some good prizes this time. So I'll keep you updated on the kitchen project, not the kitchen project, the corner project. And I'll take you along with me when I do some of my Christmas shopping. So thank you all for sticking around this long. This one was a long one. I didn't think it was going to be this long, but that's what I do. I talk. So y'all have a great night. And I'll let you in on the mirror project, see how that goes after I clean up all this. And then that's probably what I'll be working on before I go to bed tonight. So I'm going to get these all uploading and you guys have a great night. And I'll talk to you real soon. Bye.